So I first discovered Imaginary Authors fragrances way back in 2013, 10 years ago. And I bought a fragrance at that time called Bull's Blood. This one right here. This is my original Bull's Blood fragrance. It still has some juice in it. And it's the old bottle, as you can see, with the old artwork. But Bull's Blood is brought back. It was discontinued and it's now back as a completely new fragrance. And it's joined in the collection of Imaginary Authors fragrances. I really enjoy Imaginary Authors because they are indie niche. And they do do some out there kind of fragrances. And that's why I've been a fan of the house since 2013. So today I'm talking about three of their latest redos, relaunches, brought back kind of fragrances, including the Softlawn 2.0, this one right here that came out in 2021. A re-release of a whiff of waffle cone, this one right here. And then finally, the 2.0 edition of Bull's Blood. So if you want to find out about these three fragrances, please stay tuned. And also, if you are local or you are online, the fragrances are carried at Ministry of Scent here in San Francisco. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. Do let me know if you are a fan of Imaginary Authors fragrances. Let me know what your favorite fragrances are from the house. I really enjoy A City on Fire and various other fragrances from this house. But really, A Whiff of Waffle Cone has become a favorite of mine. That is the new bottle. And this is the original bottle that launched during the pandemic. It was a fragrance that was uh, done with uh, a ice cream chain called Salt and Straw, as you can see on the back here. It's also on the back of the original bottle. I don't have too much left of the original, but n the original was also not available at stockists that sold Imaginary Authors. You can only get it at S Salt and Straw and also Imaginary Authors website. But now you can get a whiff of Waffle Cone at all stockists that sell Imaginary Authors fragrances, including Ministry of Scent, here in San Francisco. So I'm gonna to talk to you about these three fragrances that are re-released, touch on a little bit of how they used to be back when they were original. See, I'm gonna show you the original soft lawn and this is the new soft lawn here as well. So they have done these fragrances over. But let's talk about the soft lawn edition 2.0 first. This version came out in 2021. It features notes of linden blossom, grapefruit, laurel leaves, ivy leaves, vetiver, oak moss, fresh tennis balls. So when I first heard about this fragrance and the idea that there was a tennis balls smell or note in it, I got very excited. I thought to myself, that's fun. I used to love to play tennis as a teenager and I like that smell. Opening up a can of tennis balls, that smell, that fragrance was captured in the soft lawn as a fragrance but it does feature prominently the linden blossom note and that's what i like about it it's fresh it's green and it's a yellow flower i've been talking a lot about linden blossom fragrances or linden blossom in general it's a very intoxicating smell especially if you smell them on trees during the latter part of spring Man, this, this smell is amazing. It's captured here quite prominently, but it's mixed in with other notes to create this kind of a tennis balls-like effect. So you have the linden blossom here. There's loads of grapefruit. It's quite zingy. It's a bit bitter, but also very fresh and citrusy. Laurel leaves come in as well, along with ivy leaves. And this is definitely prominent. The ivy leaves are really, really prominent in the soft lawn in both editions because I felt like they were really, really in your face because if you've ever spent time next to ivy leaves grown on a you know the side of a park or next to a house or something you can really smell that kind of dusty green bit minerally kind of interesting smell i get gray green from it it's green obviously but there's this gray smell from it and it's definitely here prominently for me this fragrance is very tennis ball like you do pick up the tennis balls for sure but first it's very fresh and green and that yellow floral touch of the linden blossom and the tennis balls eventually develops and it kind of gets uh, more prominent and you do start noticing that 
there is that smell of the tennis balls in this fragrance. Now I have a friend that used to love wearing this and for probably two, three years, maybe five, six, seven years ago, this person was wearing bottle after bottle of this stuff and he, they would tell me uh, that they would get compliments. People would stop them and ask them what they're wearing. And I think it's a very unique fragrance, especially for the fact that it has this very unusual note of tennis balls. And if you're a lover of Linden Blossom, you know, playing tennis on a tennis ball court and things like that, Ivy, all these notes together, green fragrances, I think you're going to be happy with this one. So I highly recommend you get your nose on the Soft Lawn 2.0. And the, difference are, the differences are... Here's the difference. For me, I feel like in the original, the Linen Blossom might have been a little stronger, a little more potent, and I feel like it's a bit toned down in this particular new version. But everything else feels very similar. You might have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but everything is the same pretty much. Lots of ivy leaves, Linda Blossom, the grapefruit, the laurel leaves, and then of course oak moss and things like that, and the tennis balls come in as well. It's a very fun and unusual fragrance, very green, and again, the tennis balls note is very, very unique, unusual but unique, and if you've ever played tennis, open up a canister of tennis balls, that smell is really, really captured here in the Soft Lawn. So that's the Soft Lawn 2.0, the first fragrance I'm talking about today from the House of Imaginary Authors. So up next, we've got a whiff of Waffle Cone, the 2023 edition. As you can see here, they do mention the Salt and Straw store in the back, still like the last one. There was a price difference with between the two fragrances. I think when it first launched, it was selling at the Salt and Straw stores, and I think it was a different price. Now that it's available for sale everywhere with all the, you know, the stores and stockists that sell Imaginary Authors, it's now joined the price point of every other fragrance from the Imaginary Authors collection of fragrances. What I liked about this one is the first true gourmand from Imaginary Authors. I'm a big fan of gourmand fragrances. You know this about me. I love my delicious gourmand fragrances. And this to me was in your face, vanillic, delicious ice cream like caramelly, spicy gourmand. And you know what? To me, it's very, very close once again between the original and the new version. But there is a little bit of a difference. For me, the cinnamon is a bit more amplified in A Whiff of Waffle Cone compared to the original. So for me, A Whiff of Waffle Cone 2023 seems a bit more spicier. So it's vanilla, salted caramel, Saigon cinnamon, heavy cream, sandalwood, orgeat, scoop shop. They call it scoop shop in this and they call it ice cream shop in this. So they, things are a bit changed up. And there was an amorous note in the original that is not listed on the notes for uh, the, the new version. But other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. And again, it's definitely gourmand, very kind of lactonic, milky, creamy, vanillic, also caramelly and a bit salty. But the cinnamon is a bit more amplified. Just, just imagine you've gotten yourself a really nice, delicious, kind of like an ice cream sun sundae with caramel. And you've added, you know, it's like the salted caramel thing and you've just sprinkled a little too much cinnamon. And I love cinnamon. It's got a very holiday vibe. And a whiff of waffle cone to me is very holiday-like. After a big dinner with family over the holidays, you're having this big tons of scoops of ice cream with salted caramel drizzled all over it and then sprinkled with cinnamon. That's how delicious this is. This is a whiff of waffle cone 2023. Let me know if you're a fan of these fragrances. Let me know if you're a fan of the House of Imaginary Authors. The fragrances are indie. Definitely recognize that they are not necessarily that conventional because when you're buying a fragrance from Macy's or something, you're not going to get a fragrance that smells like tennis balls. So you're not. I've never noticed that in a fragrance from the world of designers or, you know, the you know mass market fragrances like uh, you buy at Macy's. But I think a whiff of waffle cone to me might be the most traditional because it's a gourmand and you're, we're working with kind of, you know, edible notes and things like that. So it might smell the more, most conventional. But again, I think it's still indie niche, not any designer fragrances uh, that... Uh, are out there that are similar. The only other thing I want to say is, I forgot to mention, there is a DNA running throughout the brand as well, and I feel like you'll notice it in the base, the dry down. 
there's this kind of a woody DNA, woody base DNA running throughout the fragrances that I notice when I wear the fragrances of imaginary authors. And last but not least, it's the redo, or I should say second edition of Bull's Blood, this one right here. So Bull's Blood was the very first fragrance I purchased ordered from the imaginary authors website back in 2013. And I still have a little bit of the juice left as you can see. And man, I absolutely was obsessed with that fragrance for the longest time, but all of a sudden it became too animalic for me and I couldn't wear it anymore. Has that ever happened to you guys with fragrances? You love something and then it changes on you, your body chemistry changes, something happens and it becomes overwhelming. And this became overwhelming for me. Something about this version, the, the original Bull's Blood, I couldn't tolerate it anymore. And it was discontinued, it had its fans and things like that but it was discontinued because I think it was just overwhelming with the animalic notes. The notes for the original patchouli, Spanish rose, costas root, tobacco, black musk, bull's blood. I think it's that costas root I have a very challenging time with. And when my nose became very acquainted with the original bull's blood, I think I started picking up the costas root and it really was bothering me. So the new edition doesn't have the costas root, but to me, the current version of Bull's Blood seems like it's blended a lot better, I should say, compared to the original. The original was a lot more rough, rougher. This is smoother, but still animalic to me. Definitely very animalic. So the notes are geranium, Spanish rose, patchouli, black musk, tobacco, sandalwood, and bull's blood. So there is a bloody metallic consistency in this. You get that from geranium, you get that from rose, and they have an amplified you know, concentration of the geranium and the rose. Geranium also helps the, the rose, kind of amplifies the rosiness. So I think they contribute to creating this kind of a metallic kind of an experience here, but lots of those notes of rosin, geranium. Of course, there's patchouli, so this kind of goes into a little bit of a sheeper-like direction. Musk, tobacco, dirty, a bit ashy, kind of smoky, and of course, sandalwood and the bull's blood. And it's the bull's blood, whatever the note they're using to create this bull's blood, it could be like an accord they've created and calling it bull's blood, does add this kind of ferocious, rough animalic quality, even though I said this edition of Bull's Blood, it's a lot smoother and it feels it's like it's blended a lot better than this version, which is very much, much more rougher, especially for the fact that it had that costus root. This is actually an animalic lover's dream come true kind of a fragrance. It's done very, very well, but you got to be into rose because it's a rose bomb after all. It's very, very rosy, spicy, woody, rosy. And then the idea of minerals does, does come in because, you know, you get that kind of thing, metallic minerals from the idea of the blood. And then there's the smoky touches and leathery touches as well. I feel like there's the leathery aspect to this and the fact that it's a bull, the bull, and then the riding the bull and all that kind of stuff, the leather, the, the stuff that you sit on in there, all of that kind of stuff contributes to creating this very complex and anomalic fragrance that's actually made much more smoother than the original. So it's a lot more easier to wear this one now that it does not have the Costas root. Thank, thankfully, it's it's a note that you guys should look into if you're into anomalic fragrances. Look it up and see what it smells like. It's It sounds a bit weird what it smells like. And it's used in fragrances. It's actually a natural ingredient. It comes from a plant. So thankfully, they've removed moved it and made it a lot smoother, but kept the animalic touches. And, uh, you know, we've got a nice edition of Bull's Blood now from Imaginary Authors. And look at that beautiful artwork on the front. If you guys don't know anything about Imaginary Authors, all the fragrances are inspired by Imaginary Authors, and they're supposed to look like little books sitting on a, you know, a shelf or something. And then the, the artwork here for the new Whiff of Waffle Cone, and then, of course, the new soft lawn 2.0 anyway those are my thoughts on these three fragrances from imaginary authors let me know your thoughts on these fragrances and let me know if you're a fan of this house what are your favorite fragrances from this house and also if you are looking to pick these fragrances up they are available at ministry of scent i have a link in the info box please use the links in the info box and check out what else and um, what other brands they have over at Ministry of Scent. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.
But I'm shooting this portion of the video many days after I shot the main portion of the video, now that I finally have my blend number 83. So I ordered blend number 83, it's been a month or so. And I ordered it with the special edition flacon, this really beautiful glass. So it was delayed multiple times. I guess there's a glass making issue. So imaginary authors finally decided to ship the bottles and they're going to ship the actual glass flacons later. I'm hoping very soon because I bought these to give as gifts to family. So now I can't because I bought four bottles and I'm hoping I'm going to get four of the flacons. But um, I, I, th that, that particular you know, combo sold out pretty fast, I think, because it wasn't, it was the same price as the bottle. So I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to get those very soon. But what's blend number 83 all about? First of all, it's an exclusive online release. And it's a collaboration with Absolute Vodka and Kahlua. And the idea is an espresso martini. So there was a time I was drinking chocolate martinis and espresso martinis quite a bit. I enjoy these two delicacies. It's a great, great combo. I think also here with blend number 83, not I think, I know. It's actually a combo of espresso martini and the chocolate martini because we've got both. So you have the kind of idea of the absolute vodka and Kahlua because when I was ordering these uh, cocktails, they would make them with vodka and I'm not sure if they were using absolute, but absolute at one time also had an espresso version and a chocolate version. I don't even know if they'd still do or not. But I like this collaboration. It's kind of sort of like the uh, Salt and Straw collab from several years ago. And uh, the uh, a Whiff of Waffle Cone fragrance was uh, born then. Now the collaboration is with the uh, Absolute Vodka and Kahlua. And we've got blend number 83. So this is the bottle right here. On the side, we've got blend 83. On the back, we've got the notes and the juice. Look at the juice. It's quite like an espresso martini so dark and like a, it looks like a delicacy drink so the notes are dark chocolate sugar cane rum arabica coffee velvety foam benzoin night musk and decadence so imaginary authors always throws in that kind of a unique note at the very last notes breakdown of a note that you probably haven't heard of and in this case it's decadence. I agree it's decadent. Let's go ahead and sniff it on camera for you but before I smell the fragrance on camera I've already smelled it once or twice and uh, this is also featured in another video stay tuned for that. But those of you that are familiar with the espresso martinis or chocolate martinis, do let me know if it's uh, something that you enjoy consuming. Uh, I'd like to find out. And if, you've, if you're a fan of those, and if you have sampled the blend number 83 yet. So it's so chocolatey. For me, it's more chocolate, but it's almost like, a, you know, a mocha, a chocolate and coffee together, you know, hot beverage. It smells like that, but with an overdose of the DNA of imaginary authors and like woods and resins in the dry down. So in the back, way in the back, there's this kind of woody backbone and also resinous ambery backbone. But it's chocolatey and it's coffee and it's a chocolate coffee gourmand. It's super delicious, actually. Really, really great. Really great. Although that that woods and amber resins thing in the background may be a bit too much, it adds a, a bit of a roughness to the fragrance rather than very smooth. But I think this is super delicious, what they've done with this one. Um, I'm a gourmand lover, of course. And um, I think this is the second full-on gourmand that Imaginary Authors has created. So let me know if you've gotten your nose on blend number 83. Let me know if you're a fan of the house. Have you tried a whiff of waffle cone? Uh, do let me know. Put a comment down. And yeah, if you got the blend number 83 and you ordered it with the, the flacon, the special glass flacon, let me know if you've been waiting or anticipating for that because I've been waiting and it's just taking forever. I'm hoping by the time I get back from Japan that will be delivered as I'd like to see what it is that I actually ordered because I don't even know. But this actually, blend number 83, smells delicious. Those of you that love chocolate and coffee gourmands definitely would enjoy this one. Just keep in mind that kind of woods and resin amber kind of a backbone here against the gourmand notes. But I find it su super delicious. Anyway, blend number 83 for you guys. 
Oh, also look in the back. You've got the Absolute and Kahlua logos back there as well. I forgot to show that originally. See you guys later.